Hi, I'm Andrea with Ford Riders Review. We're at Sacred Craft Show for this weekend, and we're here with Robert August. Thanks for joining us today, Robert. My pleasure. Um, tell me a little bit about some of your boards you're displaying today. Well, in a show like this, you try to show as much variety as you can. You know, we've got short boards, long boards. This is a replica of the board that I wrote in the end of summer. And you just want to open up as much conversation as you can. But, you know, as you see, there's a real variety of people around here. Kids, hardcore surfers, beginners. And so it's such a cool show because it's just information gathering for everybody that comes to the show. Talk about how, how surfboards have dramatically changed since this replica that you have to the, the shorter boards and in the performance boards and the hybrid boards. And how have you incorporated that? into your own shaping. Well, this, having this board here is a great starting point because people look at it and go, how in the world did you ride this thing, you know, because everybody's seen the end of summer 10 to 100 times. Yeah, I've heard of that, Bill. And they watch, they watch, and then they look at this thing and say, you actually broke these, you know, because we have evolved so far, you know. The materials are lighter, there's rocker, there's fins. This board has a giant fin on it, which makes it really hard to ride. And so everything is evolved into making it so much easier to surf these days. It's easier to learn. There's a lot more girls surfing because the boards are so easy to deal with. And uh, so it's part of the evolution of it. When, during these days, to start surfing, you had to really want it bad to deal with the equipment. Also, we had no wetsuits. We had no leashes. And that also made it pretty darn challenging, too. You know, I'm surfing at Santa Cruz in February with no wetsuit on. The water's 40, 60 degrees. With a board like this. With a board like this. And we're just dealing with it because the waves are good. We didn't right. care. Right. Plus, we're kids. You don't get cold when you're 17 years old. Right. But, uh, so, from, from the public looking at this board and picking it up, So much more user friendly, and then plus you can get into the different styles of surfing. That's it. We got little short boards. We got the little fish quad. Can you things. show me some of some of the um, the no, more modern shorter boards that you have? Mm -hmm. A lot of these are like retro. You know, this whole fish thing is something that we we're pretty much doing, you know, 20 years ago. Right. And the kids have found out, and you know, grown ups too, that it's a different kind of surfing. And it's a lot of fun. They stay right on top of the water and they just skate. They go real fast. You can't do the big smooth turns on them like you can with a regular tri fin with a narrow tail and stuff. But it's fun. And the kids that are really cool these days can ride a long board, they can ride a short board, and they all want to have one of these to see how fast they can go. Right. Tell me a little bit about this uh, Richard series that, that you shaped and how long have we been shaping these? Well, I've been shaping boards like this 40 years ago, you know, when they first came out. And I still have the same template that I used back then. And the whole of surfing in terms of, of, of the materials, but you still have the same types of designs as you did 40 years ago, and it seems like a lot of people, because um, people become more experienced, there, there's different types of boards. Now, like you said, the, the kids, are they're riding the bigger boards, the more older boards, the newer retro boards. Is that kind of how you kind of had, not really adjusted your style, but you kind of, kind of keep up with the times and what the surfers want? Well, that's one of the things where I, you know, I mean, None of, none of us surfboard makers make much money, but it's just such a great thing to do to go to work every day because you have to stay current and you try to stay ahead of everybody else. The surfing is improving all the time. The surfers are so much better now. I mean, the board, these boards are real similar to the ones I made 40 years ago, but the surfers are so much better. What they're doing on this board is unbelievable compared to the guys that did 40 years ago. Just because Tail rocker, and they want, or the guy weighs 280 pounds, and he's a fat guy. He 
needs some help. You <laughs> he know? needs this. He needs, he needs a lot of girth. So we bulk it up, we make it wider, and deep with it to make sure this guy has fun. And so what we do with shapers is uh, it's really enjoying it. Last summer I shaved my 32,000 floors that I personally shaved. And uh, you would think I would at some point get tired of it. But, uh, you don't. You, know, you wake up in the morning and I like it. And he's going to stoke other people out, so... Oh, and the guy gets his new board, and it's just what he wanted. He's the happiest guy in California, or Florida, or wherever he wants. You know, that guy's just stoked out his mind. He can't wait to get to the beach and ride some waves. Right. So it's really, it's, it's uh, performing a good service. Exactly. And you also have a deal where people can actually come and shape a board with you. Explain yeah. that briefly for us. Well, they come in you know, to my factory. spend all day with them, like eight hours. As much as possible, I try to not do the work myself. Just constant instruction. So at the end of the day, you're finished with this thing, and they can pretty much say, I shape that board. You know? And if I can look at it, or another shaper can look at it and go, well, there's a little problem here and there. But structurally, they get the glass job, they get call it anything they want. Shape by, and they put, you know, a shaper always signs for, and, 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 and with Robert August. So they actually have an emotional attachment to this piece of foam. I did it. You know, they get a video of the whole day and, and photos the whole day, and we give them a poster and a nice lunch. You know, at lunchtime we go and talk about everything we've done up to that point, and then I explain to them what we're going to do after lunch to finish this thing up. And, First, I was kind of apprehensive about, God, you know, this guy's paying, I think they pay 15 or 1600 bucks. They get the board, which is worth a thousand bucks. Exactly. And then, and then the whole... And the shaping time with Robert August. Yeah, and then they get the whole experience of doing this thing. I, I thought, I just, first of all, I don't want to disappoint anybody. You know, what if they go, ah, that was a waste of money? Not at all. Every one of them just, and there was two guys here yesterday that, came up a couple months ago from San Diego and they did the shaping thing and one of them had pictures of his board, you know, and then the pictures of him surfing on it. He just was showing everybody, he was so excited, you know, this is the best day of my life, you know. So after I did it a few times, I have confidence, I know they're going to have a good time. They're going to end up with a board that they can ride. Exactly. And one shaped how they want it to be shaped, being conducive to how they ride their board. Yeah. It's a great program, man. I've met some really cool people, you know, and we've become friends, and you know, it's great. It's great. Robert August, yeah. thank you. Thank Still you. one of the best shapers around, and you can always have an endless summer. No, I'm the August. second best shaper in the world. Second best shaper in the world. Because Just there's the first. 45 other guys here today that say they're the best, so <laughs> I'll, I'll take number two. www.robertaugust.com.